Hi, welcome to episode four of Hunters Living with Art. I'm Hunter Thomas, and we are sitting in the warehouse of the Nancy Thomas Gallery, or as we like to call it, the avocado, because the outside of the building's green. Tonight, we of course have our two cocktails inspired by the month of May, think Cinco de Mayo. And I have a very special guest. Lynn is the executive director of Hope House Foundation. She has won numerous awards and honors and has sat on the President's Commission on Intellectual Disabilities. She's an international keynote speaker. Her topics include organization and leadership, team building and strategic planning. She's helped me a lot with that. However, I know her as my dearest friend and an unconditional supporter of the arts and artists. Welcome, Lynn Siegel. Thank you, <laughs> Hannah. That was good. Yay. That was a, you summed it up. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> Took a <the> ball. <laughs> Again, I'm supportive. <laughs> so I thought that May would be a great month to have you for many reasons. Birthday, <laughs> birthday month. Yeah. And um, it's also the month of Stockley Gardens Art Festival which is sponsored by Hope House Foundation. Now, I of course know what this is, but tell the audience what that show is and how it relates to Hope House. Stockley Gardens Art Festival is held in the spring and the fall. Hope House Foundation puts the whole thing on, and that weekend attracts about 25,000 people, about 130 artists, there's local music featured throughout the weekend and all the proceeds go directly to support people with intellectual disabilities in the Hampton Roads area. There was a show there uh, 35 years ago and it was called the Gen Arts Festival. And then uh, the city of Norfolk asked the organizer of the show, which was the Norfolk Free Clinic, to move it to this new place called Town Point Park. I remember that, I remember. They were planting new trees and they were gonna serve beer during the weekend. Mm -hmm. And there was a small contingency of artists that said, no way, man, this isn't what this is about. And uh, they protested, they called it Keep It in Ghent. And then a staff member of Hope House went to one of their meetings and said, we'll do one. And so we created the Stockley Gardens Art Show the weekend after the Ghent Art Show, mm -hmm. which was Mother's Day weekend. Mm -hmm. We did the weekend right afterwards. And so it just kind of goes to show that, you know, there's no more Ghent Arts Festival. There's not, nothing like that there anymore. But Stockley has continued to grow strong. Mm -hmm. And I think it's a great lesson in hearing the minority voice and building community around people who are closest to it and want. One thing I remember you got my mom involved and two things, you got her to do the poster and then you got me to do the poster, which was phenomenal. It was the girls rock. Yay. Yeah. But um, tell me, I want to hear your version of getting my mom involved in Stockley Gardens because it was a crack it's up It's a great me. story. Um, I love the story and um, the way it happened was we that are judges i mean we look for judges that are very very well respected you know because i mean people are sh not only showing their art they're showing their heart and you know you just can't be reckless about mm -hmm. that kind of thing so you have to have someone that is really respected so the the day before the show uh the judge that we had we have lined up six months in advance calls uh, elena and he's deathly ill and he cannot make it. And she calls me and she goes, what oh, are we gonna, gonna do? <laughs> and I don't really remember why, but I remember the feeling of how. And that is, I called you. Yeah, that's what I remember. I called you. And I thought, well, I mean, Nancy Thomas, she has a, a, not only a name, a brand, but she's an incredible artist and surely knows art. And I said, Can, could she come and do a full day? And wasn't it like the next day? It, it was, was the, the next, next day. day. <laughs> and you said, hold on. 
I mean, this was, by this time, it was late afternoon. It was and later than that. It, it was evening. It was, it was probably. <laughs> <laughs> and you said, let me call her. And you called me back and you said, she'll do it. So I, I thought two things about that. I thought, one, how someone like Nancy Thomas, who does have a name and does have a brand, would step in at the last minute in an outdoor festival with local artists three blocks long <laughs> and go through this judging because it's not, you know, it's not an easy task. Artist after artist after artist said, you're kidding me. Oh my God, I can't believe it. I've never met her. Consistently, it was like a wave. Wow. I remember people telling me and some of them didn't know that she was my mom, it's just conversational, that she spent time with each and every artist and the awards were across the board. She covered all the mediums. I think the majority of the people we uh, partner with do talk to the artists. Mm -hmm. But um, those, that kind of evaluation is uh, very unique. <laughs> it's a huge show. Go to it. It's, it's an May amazing show. May 19th and 20th. May 19th and 20th <laughs> in Norfolk, Virginia. You find the best judges across the nation, from what I know. Exactly. So it's really um, a cool thing that can uh, strengthen my passion about the whole idea of community, and that is supporting local artists, supporting local musicians, but also supporting inclusion. Inclusion of everybody. Mm -hmm. Inclusion, not just of people with disabilities, but everyone else that needs to be part of the whole. I'm glad you bring up inclusion, because when we spoke on the phone and I said, you know, I know I want you and I want to talk, because we have great conversations about art, and your collection of art is phenomenal. I mean, your apartment is, is it is a gallery, and it's a changing mood. You, you've even had a curate, a yeah. curate, didn't the Chicago? Uh, twice. The, the director twice. of Chicago Institute of Art come and curate your art and your. Uh, yes, the, uh, she was with the uh, Chicago Museum of Modern Art as a registrar for like 25 years. Teaches at the Art Institute, you know, um, is an appraiser. So yes, wow. but I've known her since junior high school. So yes, she's come twice to just like, okay. Yeah, what's the first piece of art that you bought? Oh, um, well, the most significant piece I bought was by an artist called Clayton Singleton. And he was just graduating college. And there, it's a huge piece, of, kind of almost a self-portrait with uh, him making a piece of pottery. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was in the show, it was in Stockley, and my friend, the same friend we just spoke about from Chicago said, you should buy this artist before, <laughs> before he really he... starts selling. And he did. And he did. And I bought that piece. This keeps pinging off me. So when we spoke on the phone, you said, well, I'm, I want to talk about inclusion. OK? <laughs> so this is what's in my mind about this. So the color purple um, is associated with royalty because it was really hard to get, only royal Right. could get it. Right. So it was not accessible. Um, now, my whole thing, my whole thing about art is that anybody's an artist. You know, if you draw, you're an artist. It's about expression and, you know, there's no rules and you don't have to have an MFA and, I mean, it's nice. I'm not, I'm not putting any of that down. But my message or my belief has been inclusion. I didn't really realize this till we spoke. But now, I don't know if I'm turning into an old curmudgeon or what, but with Instagram and all the social media, mm -hmm. everybody's an artist. Everybody's an artist, but it's about their process. And I'm having a very, I'm, I'm having a difficult time reconciling, is it about the artist watch me paint or is it about what they are um, creating? And I bring this up because it's going exactly opposite of what you said and what I've always believed, like inclusion. Art should be inclusive. Mm -hmm. Everyone should access it. Well, I mean, really, when you think about it, humans are creative. 
Now, there are people that have different levels of communication about that. And I think there are some artists that burn with the need to communicate some very deep thoughts that they have about the world or whatever. And there are some artists that need to communicate something less deep, but no less valuable. Mm -hmm. So the person that makes um, individual do doilies for the nursing home, they're beautiful. Mm -hmm. And I think they're communicating something. And then there are other artists, um, Will Core comes to mind, Peter Paul Connolly comes Absolutely. to mind, and actually you come to mind, <laughs> that communicate something um, more complex. At the time that Nancy was really starting to define herself as an artist, mm -hmm. there wasn't a lot of women no. doing that. At the time, Nancy was so prolific in what she wanted oh, to Lord. say through art, there were not a lot of women doing that. And at the time, that was driving her was not a time that was very supportive. See, I wasn't aware of that. I didn't, I didn't, I just wasn't paying attention that way. Anyway, I love that story. And since taking over this, I, my admiration has grown. I mean, mother-daughter relationships, they're tricky. <laughs> they're, they, they, they're, they are. They are what they are, for they sure. Are. <laughs> and every daughter and every mother out there knows what I'm talking about, but <laughs> when I separate that and I'm here present with what she's done is oh it really does oh my touch my heart oh I have no doubt but I think that the the older person or the club that knits the doilies is communicating also something complex which is love and care and all those kinds of things well this is why I absolutely adore you. <laughs> well, we've known each other a long time. <laughs> so, speaking of known each other a long time, I feel like we're on your porch and it's time for our cheers. Okay. So this is a um, a pineapple jalapeno margarita. I know you like margaritas, and it's your birthday month. Yes. And um, this is a little kick to it, but I know that's probably nothing to you. The I ingredients. Love, so. love Mexican food. I know. And love. you love Mexico. Yes. <laughs> and um, so ingredients, real quick, is jalapeno, pineapple, um, pineapple juice, triple sec, and tequila. <laughs> so here we go. Cheers. Cheers. Happy birthday, May. Thank you. Oh, wow. Oh, it's good. It's very good. It's got a bite. It's peppery. It's, uh, even, a, even for you, a bite? It's got a bite, but I like a bite. Yeah. <laughs> 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 so speaking of May, I asked you to um, pick your favorite Nancy Thomas May <laughs> print and, so, and to dress that way somehow. So yes. So tell me what you chose and... and <laughs> And I love it. I love you in blue. Absolutely love you in blue. It brings out your blue eyes. So obviously, uh, not only did I want this particular dress because of the May um, uh, painting, but also I had two Nancy Thomas pieces. Uh, one is depicting Alaska in only the way she could. And this blue is in there. And also, uh, one with a mermaid of type um, with also uh, a lighter version of this, but still that hue of blue that I've seen in her paintings and that I really like. And given I don't have a lot of color in my closet, no, no it glass. stood out. Yeah. <laughs> so that's how that came to be. <laughs> I can't wear any blacks. <laughs> and it fits. <laughs> One thing I love about you, of the many, many things, is your world travels. And you have always brought me something back from other countries. Mm -hmm. It's so inspiring. But tell me when you are in other countries, or even in other states, because you're all over the place, what are you looking for? What, what do you look for in art? Primarily connection. 
And oftentimes, especially if I'm in a place that's very foreign to me, uh, it's almost what are the people who are making almost a folk art level of art or expressing things that are more basic, like a Stockley Gardens art show mm -hmm. artist. So something's got to move you. Well, it, it, well, and it's local. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's local. Well, this has been a blast. <laughs> yes, I love seeing you. Me too. Always. And you're never here. You're always on a plane. So I'm really happy and grateful that you came to spend time with us tonight. It really matters to me. Well, first of all, I would do anything for you. I would. And um, the other thing I, I really was attracted to was the whole idea of this show. Because what you said to me is, no, I don't really want to do an advertisement or an infomercial or I just want to do my own show about what I'm passionate about, which is art. It is. And, you know, who wouldn't sign up for that? It's a great honor. Well, thank you, Lynn. Thanks. You get the essence of the whole thing. Thanks. you back at you, darling. All right, well, I am going to clear these away and prepare for our second drink, which is called a Paloma. So this is our second drink. It's called a Paloma, and it is tequila. Yeah. And grapefruit juice and sugar and um, uh, strawberry on and a strawberry, but the seltzer. tonic water, seltzer water. Thank you. Seltzer water. Seltzer water. Okay. okay. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> Refreshing. Yeah. Like it's, a springtime drink. It is a spring, yeah. I could see drinking this in May. I, I mean, can it's, too. It's just a nice kind of, I think it's, soda water makes everything sort of, oh, refreshing. It feels light. Yeah. That other one had like, good job. Ugh, pepper. Ugh. 